So my name is Johnny Shen, last name is S-H-E-N, Johnny, J-O-H-N-N-Y. Um, I'm an MD, so a medical doctor. Um, did uh, uh, my training in San Antonio Medical School, mm -hmm. currently working at American Family Care, or AFC. Um, we have a couple clinics throughout Denver. Excellent. And mm -hmm. you guys are gearing up for peak time mm -hmm. in this flu season, aren't that's you? That's right. Okay, and that's why we're here now. You know, I have uh, several questions, and let me know if you think there's anything that I should ask you as well. Sure. Uh, you know, last year I'm hearing 180 kids died mm -hmm. nationwide. And I think what's, that's startling enough, but what catches my attention is that 80% of those kids were not vaccinated. So what does that indicate to you? So that's unfortunate that something that typically can be preventable or um, in some cases reduce the severity of flu um, uh, should have been something that was more encouraged. Okay, mm -hmm. so the fact that that many people had to, uh, uh, that many people, children especially, actually died um, gives us a warning you know, that uh, this is a wake-up call. That flu vaccine is something that should be uh, encouraged. And it, the fact that they were not vaccinated tells us that a strong proportion of those kids most likely um, would not have suffered if they had the vaccine. And that's why it's so important for us to encourage vaccination. How do you describe this year's vaccine? So this, a lot of times, that's a hard question to answer because a lot of times the studies of how effective a vaccine was overall um, has only been shown after the vaccination um, uh, vaccines were given. Mm -hmm. So then for us to say, well, what, is it effective right now or is it um, uh, something that we um, are 100% sure that's going to work as well as previous ones, it's hard to say. Okay. However, overall, we still recommend it just because each year we have a lot of good scientists trying to develop the best vaccine for this particular illness and they match it to the different types of flu strains out there. So above all else, we always re recommend vaccination for the flu. The CDC is indicating that fewer people last year got the flu shot. Mm -hmm. Is that a trend that we're seeing as each year passes? So it's, it's something that, again, I feel it's unfortunate because, you know, um, without getting into a whole vaccine debate itself, I think most people, um, they neglect how serious flu can be. Mm -hmm. And once those st st uh, statistics come out where people unnecessarily end up in the ICU or actually died from it, then we look back and say, well, you know, this is something we need to change. From a public health perspective, we need to encourage more vaccinations. We have to get all healthcare personnel, officials, as well as uh, your family doctor, your nurse practitioner, your PA, anybody on the whole health system needs to encourage it. And I think it's important that we, as providers and healthcare um, uh, professionals, only uh, we also do it ourselves too. We can't just encourage patients to do it. We also have to make sure that we are fully vaccinated throughout the entire system. So if parents are watching and they say, well, I'm going to get my kids mm -hmm. covered, but I may not need it. Right. What would you say to that? I would say that uh, it's risky. You know, it's, it's like wearing a seatbelt. You know, you, you know, nine out of 10 times you're gonna be fine, but the whole reason why you wear it is to prevent that one chance that something bad, something, something dangerous might happen. If you are getting vac your child vaccinated, be a good role model, get vaccinated as well. Cause you know, you, you don't wanna be the one that's potentially spreading flu because you didn't get vaccinated. Now you get grandma sick or an unborn child sick, an unborn, a newborn child sick, especially since you can't have the vaccine until you're six months or older. Mm -hmm. So anybody less than that, you're putting them at a risk or people who are immunosuppressed, people with diabetes, renal problems, cardiac problems, people with HIV, those people are in the, um, or cancer, for instance, they're in the higher risk category. So you really need to make sure that not only your kids, but also yourself. Good point, and you touched upon something briefly here. Should pregnant women get it? Absolutely, yeah. The vaccine is fairly, uh, pretty safe for uh, pregnant women to get. Um, consult your OB, your family doctor, but it's something okay. we definitely recommend. Can pregnant moms pass the flu on to babies? Abs uh, while they're, Pregnant. Pregnant. Um, no, because you're technically, the flu is infecting the mother. Gotcha. Okay, so the mother can be sick, but then that can 
uh, lead to bad outcomes in her pregnancy. Does anyone have the flu in Colorado now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we are anticipating the numbers to grow, but we have had some uh, positive flu cases in the last couple of weeks, okay, and even during the summer. The flu is all around, all year round. It's just usually October and February is when we see the numbers uh, spike up and peak. So we have had a few cases, um, I think in a week we've had a four or five already. Um, so again, get vaccinated, okay, get, get that, get that uh, shot, it's easy. It's fairly painless and yeah. just get it done. Does it concern you at all how many cases we've already seen this season? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's something that we're always striving to uh, see less of, okay? So it concerns me that people out there aren't, uh, aren't, aren't I guess um, uh, they, they don't understand how serious this thing can be, okay? They're just like, okay, it's just the flu, I'll get over it. Now a healthy adult, healthy individual, yes, usually a lot of times you'll just get over it. But again, you are also trying to mitigate the risk. You don't want to pass it to a little kid. You don't want to pass it to grandma, grandpa, right. somebody in the hospital who doesn't have a good immune system. Why are doctors urging people to get the flu vaccine before October 31st? So typically, the flu, like I said, the flu uh, season does peak between October and February. Now, the flu vaccine does take about two weeks, okay, for your body to produce antibodies. That way, you are effectively uh, immunized against the flu. So, uh, before the flu season peaks, you definitely want to go ahead and get vaccinated so that by then, you know, when November's around, everything is all set, your body's all geared up, your immune system's ready. Um, and then again, from a public health perspective, we want everybody to do their, uh, put, you know, put an effort and do their, uh, put in their, uh, basically they want to do, this is a team effort, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, you want everybody to get vaccinated before this flu season peaks, because then, you know, the, the, the numbers of people with positive flu might climb. Um, do you know the difference between Tamiflu and this new drug out on the market, Zofluza? That's a great question, okay? I haven't read all the, the fine okay. details about it. I know they're both antivirals, okay? Tamiflu has been the one that's been used forever, <laughs> for many years now. Yeah. Um, and then I have to look at the, the slight differences and kind of read some of the papers to see what exactly makes this one better. But the fact that it's actually approved and it's on the market, you know, that says a lot because it does take many, many years, many trials, many uh, smarter than me, you know, scientists out there to get this finally approved. So it is something uh, exciting and worthwhile to look into. I'm sure people are also thinking, well, if there's a treatment out, maybe I don't need the vaccine, but that's probably not the right way to look at this. No, it's not. It's kind of like um, you don't want to have to get sick and then get treated. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be able to prevent it from um, affecting you in the first place. Because once you get sick, it'll hit you like a ton of bricks. Compared to the common cold, the flu is pretty severe. You know, it's a sudden on onset, and then that leads to missed days of work, and then you gotta stay home, you gotta make sure your kids aren't sick, they miss school. Uh, it's a lot of productivity that's lost. So you don't wanna wait until you're sick to get treated. You wanna prevent it from getting there in the first place. Absolutely. And go ahead and tell us if maybe some people are not familiar, what are the worst symptoms of mm. the flu? What does getting the flu mean? Yeah, so um, the flu, you know, influenza, a couple of strains out there, they cause very similar symptoms. Mm -hmm. You're, you typically have, for lack of a better term, you feel like you've been hit by a truck is how a lot of people describe it. Your whole body um, will ache, okay? You'll have a headache, okay? Um, usually fever is very common. We're talking 103, 104 degrees fever, okay? In both children and adults. Um, compared to the common cold, you know, you'll, usually with a cold, you'll have some sniffles, you'll have a runny nose, maybe a sore throat and some cough. The flu is all that plus more, okay? And we're talking more, more days in bed, more uh, days just where you feel absolutely awful. Some people can't move because they're so exhausted, their body's trying to fight off this infection. It is just not worth it.
Mm. Okay, thank you so much. And Absolutely. Uh, it doesn't sound fun at all. No, you don't want to get the flu. <laughs> you want to you want to avoid the flu. Yeah. Uh, and so, how can we prevent getting the flu? What should we do? Absolutely. So, you know, besides being healthy, eating a healthy diet, living a pretty good, uh, healthy lifestyle, you know, you want to always wash your hands. Number one, that's how you pr prevent uh, transmission of a lot of uh, different germs around the area. When you cough, make sure you cough into your elbow and not into your hand. Um, parents, Lysol your surfaces, you know, clean, disinfect. At the end of the day, a lot of this is just making, making sure that people don't um, uh, come into contact with um, areas where flu is present. So if you have a sick, you know, uh, person at work, that person probably should stay home. If you have a sick child, this child should probably stay home. That way you minimize the flu transference from an individual to an individual throughout the community. Perfect. And just so I'm clear, four or five cases of the flu in Colorado or in Denver so to four, last week? So um, I don't have the exact numbers for you, okay, okay. but I am basically seeing that in just our own clinics. Okay, oh, wow. and so we've had uh, you know several already, if not more. Are y'all um, in yeah. Denver or outside of Denver? So we are in Denver. We have four clinics. American Family okay. Care AFC is uh, based. Um, our clinics are in Denver. Okay. There are several clinics uh, outside of Denver as well that gotcha. are also AFC. And. Uh, are kids more susceptible than adults, or really does so, it discriminate? You, in a in a way, I would say kids are probably more susceptible because kids, you know, they're they're not as stringent when it comes or strict when it comes to washing their hands. You know, they're playing in the playground and things like that. That's why kids do get sent home a lot of times because you know one child gets sick and the whole class gets sick. Um, and plus, their immune system is just not as fully developed, okay? Compared to the healthy adult, um, the child is more prone to getting sick. Again, this is why herd immunity is so important. This is why everybody should get vaccinated, whether it's the shot, the nasal spray, um, the trivalent, the quadrivalent. There's different shots out there appropriate uh, based on the, the patient. Just get, get the vaccinated. Yeah. This way you are making sure that you stay healthy and you're not... Uh, you're not contributing to um, uh, the, the progression of flu f for other people. Gotcha. And uh, wrapping up here, mm -hmm. is there a difference between the nasal spray and the shot? So, yes. Um, without getting into finer details, the nasal spray is a live attenuated vaccine, meaning the virus is actually weakened. Okay. Some of the shots, it's actually um, an activated vaccine. So there's different components to the flu vaccine itself. The CDC and as well as the advisory, uh, talk, advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, they don't recommend one shot over the other or one vaccine over the other. As long as somebody gets it, that's the overall goal is someone to get vaccinated. Um, but different vaccines do have different stipulations depending on age um, and a person's contraindications to get that vaccine. So we can tell people just get the nasal spray or the shot? They're, they're, depending on their, view. it does. So for, for, for example, the nasal spray is only recommended for anyone who's above two years old. And you don't want it to give it to people who are pregnant, people with immunosuppression or people above the age of 50, okay? So in a way, the shot is more convenient because everybody pretty much can get it as long as you're above six months. Um, even with people with egg allergies, which has been an issue in the past for people who don't want the flu shot, even if you have an egg allergy, you can still get the appropriate vaccine, okay? And as long as this, the egg allergy is, is not something more severe than hives or whole body rash, um, and it's administered um, by medical personnel and under the direction of a physician or um, MP or PA, then you should be good. So talk to your doctor, talk to your um, uh, provider, and make mm -hmm. sure that uh, you get vaccinated. Okay.